there's another in the fire standing next to me there is another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding what power sets me free there is a grave that holds nobody and now the power is in me and i can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him i can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between words then i can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between Hi guys, my name is Christine. I'm Megan. And we're so excited to have you guys back for online community. We went on a little hiatus, but we're just so excited to get back and start engaging with you all. Um, we're going to start our day off with a couple questions to start engaging. Uh, the first one's going to be, what was a meal that you had when you were younger that you can like no longer eat because you had it so much? Yeah, I think <laughs> mine would be probably hot dogs because we would eat those so much and they would give me like a stomach ache and so I can't eat them anymore. Mine's definitely like spaghetti or meatloaf. It was like one of those meals that you had. I had spaghetti after church, so like Sundays, Wednesdays, like no matter what, and then we would have leftovers. It was just, it doesn't sit well with me anymore. <laughs> um, what was the next question that we had? Yeah. Um, let's see. What? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Daniel? Daniel Goins is here. Hey, Daniel. Thea's here. Hey, Thea. How's your guys' week going? What's a meal that you guys had too much when you were children that you like can't eat anymore? <laughs> liver and onions. Who forced you to eat liver and onions? That's just not. That's that so nasty. Not sound good at all. Actually, my brother, my uncle, like used to do this thing where he would. Uh, give him money for eating weird things. He gave him a hundred dollars to eat liver and onions. I would I would eat liver and onions for a hundred dollars Easy easy mm. pretty good yeah, grocery store good. shopping at the moment Ooh. Ooh. What are you grabbing? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> What's your go-to shopping list? <laughs> Too many cooked, cooked carrots. I love cooked carrots. No, they're mushy. Okay. They're, <laughs> I love them. They're gross. Did he say mom? Mom. mom. Your mom made you? Mm. Oh, that's rough. That's Apparently liver is really bad for you. Because it's like... What animal's liver is it? Like, I, don't I think cow usually, right? No, I'm vegetarian. I don't blame you yeah, at all. Yeah, I would definitely be. I think liver is really bad because it's like, it processes everything. Yeah. So it's like... So there's just a bunch of like... It's just like the bacteria, Human, yeah, like yeah. the waste Ugh, of whatever. So bad. Yeah, it's like close to the colon. <laughs> it's <laughs> really <laughs> gross. You're a mess. So you really nasty. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Uh, what was the other one? Um, mm -hmm. What's the What's your favorite childhood movie? Mm, that's a good one. What was yours? Aristocats. Aristocats. Mine was uh, Hercules. Ooh. Could watch it all day, every day. It's like that movie you want to see like when it's raining outside. Yeah, like a comfort movie. Yeah, like when you yeah. have nothing to do. That's nice. It's bad for your liver. Well, I would assume so. <laughs> yeah, yikes. I feel like that's something your body would just reject. It can't taste good either. No. There's no way that tastes good. No, especially with onions. That's like the worst combination ever. If the onions are cooked, maybe it's okay and seasoned well. I yeah, like what are they seasoning it with? Raw onions. <laughs> Just like salt and pepper. Liver on purpose. Eats liver. Goons. On purpose? That's so nasty. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I have Natural never... selection. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's. <My> gosh. <laughs> so gross. Yeah. The chat went away. But. That's fun. Oh, there it is. It's, it's a back. Star I've Wars? Never oh, seen... you love Star Wars, don't you? I do. Yeah. I've never seen Star Wars. They have come out with a lot of, like, I have not <laughs> finished 
watching Mandalorian, and I just started the new mm -hmm. like Obi Wan show. It's good. It's I good. Heard it was good. It's really cool because it takes place like when um, like Luke and Leia are really young. So. It's so like before cool. everything, because didn't Star Wars yeah. like go back in time, or like it would it they, started at the? It started in the middle, <laughs> and Don't. then they released like. Are you laughing at? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm back in the video. <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame. You can't be out here slamming people like that. <laughs> Someone screenshot that and send it to Russ. <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame. I never saw that. Maybe they haven't seen Star Wars. Yeah, I know. I, she's seen Star Wars. I haven't, though. I grew up on it. So. They're just so long. Because there's like, what, eight movies? It's and not as bad as Marvel. You cannot be complaining about eight like two oh, yeah. hour long movies when yeah. Marvel is like 36. But I haven't even seen, like I see the like the famous Marvel ones like oh, Spider-Man or like like when Endgame came out. So I'll like watch mm. a Marvel movie and have no idea what's going on because there's like 10 backup movies. I still um, don't understand it. Like I watched no. WandaVision and I was like, I don't understand. I like I'm really enjoying this but though. I don't get it. I, I loved WandaVision. <laughs> Did you watch it? It was so thing? cute. Yeah, I loved yeah, it. I liked so it. Cute. I heard it, it was like, it had something to do with the new um, Stranger Things, not Stranger no. Things. <laughs> the new. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is going back to before we started. <laughs> no, what's the new what's Stranger Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> you need to leave the room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have you seen it though? No. I no. haven't heard good things about it. I thought it. I thought it was good. I heard that everyone said it was a Wanda movie and not a Doctor Strange. Like it was more about Wanda. Yeah, and she like, was like mm, the I main. I love her. She's great. Yeah, WandaVision kind of was like. Mm. It it was the multiverse idea though, right? Because she like she created a whole new yeah like universe. I don't understand it. It's no. too complicated. Your opinion on Marvel movies. <laughs> 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 Oh can't do Living or do Meatloaf it. anymore. I don't, yeah. Meatloaf was just one of those, like I had to make the meatloaf and my mom would be like, you know, get in there with your hands. Ew. And it's like the ketchup. Dr. Doctor Dr. Stranger <laughs> <laughs> The combination of the two, two worlds collide. Two wor That's I, the multiverse Stranger actually. Things and Doctor Strange are pretty much the same thing. Doctor Strange 2 is someone. Yeah, because there's like 10 movies in between Endgame. Yeah. And now. I saw the new Spider Man though. I liked it. I liked it. And I, hadn't see, I haven't seen any of the old ones. Well, I saw the first two Tom Holland ones, uh, but none of the previous ones. I feel like it was good. Spider Man is different than all the other movies because I feel like yeah. it doesn't have many ties to the other ones. Yeah, because he's just like there. Yeah. The he's like, he's like, like a lonesome, lonesome hero. Yeah. It is ridiculously long because I think the end game was like almost four hours. It, I think it was. Was it? So much happens. I don't get. It. You're adding even more ketchup. In Yikes. Mm -mm. My mom, I, she was like, ketchup all the way, the whole bottle in the meatloaf. Just mm -mm. get in there. Oh, and mm -hmm. the onions. Don't forget the onions. No. It was good when I was like six, but not yeah. anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to read, but I can't read that fast. <laughs> Daniel's not funny, but he's trying to be. <laughs> Isn't every Doctor Stranger ever? Okay, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. That's fine. Oh my gosh, the other question I had: What's your go-to Subway sub? No. Yes. <laughs> Meat, the meatball marinade. Meatball? Mm, nasty. <laughs> well, we're about to get started with our message. Um, I want to talk to you guys how to get plugged in with the B classes. Um, if you have any questions about who Jesus is, uh, baptism, prayer, anything like that, um, our B classes are a great way to start and get plugged in. Um, and she'll tell you how to get plugged in with prayer requests. Yeah, if you have any prayer requests, there's a pray now button, so you can click that if you have any prayer requests. Yes, and I think there's a download button uh, somewhere around here and you can just click and watch on demand. Mm -hmm. um, but we're about to go into a little two minute break, so if you guys want to, you know, grab your mom, grab your dog, 
a notebook, notebook. Yeah. <laughs> and coffee, and um, we'll just get started. CJ Watson. I'm a student pastor here at Family Church, and I'm really excited. But first, I just want to talk about real quick um, our two hosts here. My favorite thing about that entire moment was that they said they knew nothing about Star Wars or Marvel, and yet talked about it the entire time. So I, my apologies. I was behind the scenes laughing hysterically with lots of emotion. So um, it probably is why they were laughing. But I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys. Um, hey, I'm really excited uh, to be back here for the online community. Um, the team here has done such a great job with and presenting this idea. And this book that we're going to be going through for the next four weeks is Ephesians. And Ephesians in itself is such a practical and important foundational understanding of our faith and how we move forward with our relationship with Jesus. So I have a question for us, and we'll be kind of going back to this question um, a lot uh, tonight as I give the message, is why should we choose Jesus, Because there are people who live a life who are not a Christian, and they would not say that they walk alongside with Jesus, and for me on a practical level are doing pretty well for themselves. Um, I, have a lot of, I, have a lot, I know a lot of people who wouldn't categorize themselves as a Christian, or wouldn't categorize themselves as someone who's a church or something like that, but yet, hey, they make a lot of money or they, they do really, really well in life, or they just, um, they're, they're really physically fit, and they seem to not have a lot of issues in their life. And I, and I always wondered this, because um, as a Christian, I feel like I have my answer of, <clears throat> of why I should choose Jesus. But I look at it, and I'm like, you know, God created us, and that's great, but at what point do we make that decision? At what point do we understand that? Um, I thought about something that kind of relates and sort of and uh, kind of does not relate, but I'm going to go with it. Um, I bought my dog <clears throat> off of Craigslist. It was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a bargain. And um, I remember I bought him, and I chose him. I found him. I went and picked him up. And as I was writing the sermon, I realized that my dog kind of, like, chooses me, mainly because I feed him. I have access to the door, which leads him outside. Uh, if he wants treats, I give him access to that. He tore two ACLs, and I fixed those things. Um, that's a longer story that needs to be told. But um, he, he doesn't run away. He, he, he's, he's fine off leash. And so he makes that decision to choose me. And, you know, I mentioned before, it's probably because I, I give him food and, and snacks and all that good stuff. But 
uh, the same thing, the same concept of why do we choose to hang out with certain friends? Why do we hang out with these people? That why would we spend so much time, um, even with our family? Um, some of us didn't get to choose our family. We were just kind of born into it. Uh, we were just kind of raised in this household. But, you know, as you're in your adult life, you begin to choose to spend time with certain people. And so as we just head into this time, we're going to head into this time of worship. And I want you to just begin thinking of that question and maybe your, and maybe your own answer. Of why have you chose Jesus? Or maybe you're at a point in your life where you're like, I don't really think I've chosen Jesus. I think I'm just kind of trying this online thing out. Maybe someone sent it to me or I just found it online or where, wherever, however you got here tonight, um, or if you were re-watching this later or today or this morning, um, why should you choose Jesus? Or why do you think people choose Jesus? So we're gonna do some time, we're gonna have a time of worship. Um, we have the song called Make Room and it's just a perfect song to just open up our hearts and to just ask God as we open up the word and open up scripture, uh, Lord, to make room in our heart for him to do something great. Guys, take it away. Here's where I lay it down Every bird in every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every bird in every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender and I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender and I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better Shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Oh, your way is better So I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to, God And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to Whatever you want to Jesus, just thank you so much for tonight. Uh, Lord, I just ask if you could just make room in our hearts, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just pray for anyone who's watching, um, anyone in this room, 
um, Lord, who's just going through something. Um, maybe just at, at a breaking point or at a point in their life where um, they're unsure of how to move forward through a situation. And Jesus, I just ask if you could just begin to speak and minister um, to them. Oh, Lord, we love you and just so thankful for what you've done in our lives and continue to do. It's in your precious name, your son's name we pray. Everyone say, amen. So, like I said, we are in the book of Ephesians. Um, so if you have your Bible, and I know there is a Bible tab here, you can pull up Ephesians 1. We're just going to be looking at Ephesians 1 tonight. Uh, the book of Ephesians uh, was actually written in a prison. Paul is writing this book in a prison. Um, it's about the year 60 to 62 AD. That's it. Imagine just saying the, word, the year. It's like, what's the year? The year 60. It's just ridiculous. Um, it was written to encourage believers to walk as fruitful followers of Christ and to serve in unity and love in the midst of persecution. Uh, there are people who are just in this point of their life. Paul's writing to these people who are in persecution, who are battling some stuff. And he's like, listen to these words. So I'm going to read through uh, Ephesians 1, 3, and then we'll stop around 6. It says this, uh, verse 3, Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the wor world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. What's super encouraging here is that God had a plan for when we messed up. He had a plan for the fall. Um, the Adam and Eve situation, um, I don't think, shocked God, but it more is a testament to how much he loves and cares for us. You see, Jesus being, Jesus being the plan for redemption, knowing that God was going to choose people who eventually might fail him. Just think about that. If I was something that could create something or people, like I would, or if I knew how to build a robot, let's go to that. If I knew how to build a robot, I would choose to build my robot in a way that it wouldn't turn on me. I wouldn't have a Terminator situation. I would make sure if the Terminator situation happened, at least I would be spared. Like I want to make sure like the things that I create wouldn't disappoint me and wouldn't fail me. But yet God still created, even though the expectancy of knowing that we might fail him and disappoint him. We're going to get back to the thought in a second. Continue reading verse 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Verse 8, that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, then that he proposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him, we have also received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the, uh, with the purpose of his will. In verse 12, so that we had already put our hope in Christ, might bring praise to his glory. In him, you also were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed the Holy Spirit is the down payment of your inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. I know I just read a lot of scripture there, but this is what Paul's laying out. Paul's laying out all these things that we have in Christ, laying out our inheritance, laying out the redemption, laying out that he had a plan. He knew how to fix certain situations that he's like, you guys need to understand, like you are in persecution. You are in chaos. I don't think me being a Christian in 2022 can understand the level of persecution that these Christians were facing and how some Christians face even today. But us here living in Western society in the United States, um, I don't worry about being kidnapped or I don't worry about being hurt or I don't worry about being um, arrested for my faith. It's something that is so difficult for me to wrap my head around. But yet Paul is laying out these things that we have in Christ. And as someone who is writing these things in prison, 
it fascinates, fascinates me to no end. He's writing all this, all this stuff that he has. He's mentioning, man, I chose Jesus because look at this inheritance. Look at this plan that he has. Um, he, he teaches me about this grace and forgiveness. He's like the riches of his grace. He richly poured out us the wisdom and understanding. And if I, to be honest, I would have a hard time having that confidence while sitting in a prison cell. Um, I was in Rome and I passed by and my wife has spent time and gone to uh, Israel and have seen the prison that Paul stayed in. And it's, it's not pleasant. It's, I would say the prisons here were like a nice hotel like compared to them. But man, back to my question from the beginning. Why should we choose God? Maybe you're watching this and you have a lot of money and everything practically in your life is looking really nice. Your stocks are great. I wish my stocks probably looked like most of the people here. But why should you choose God? 1 John 4, 19, I believe, says, We love because He first loved us. God created us and then chose to love us. He created us and chose us regardless of knowing that we would eventually deny and fail Him. Peter, Jesus is like right-hand man, a disciple. This guy has, like I said, I went to Rome. He has a cathedral built after him because of his ministry. Peter denies him three times after Jesus tells him that he's going to do so. He's like, Peter, do you love me? And he's like, absolutely. He's like, you're going to fail me three times. Peter's like, how would that happen? And then it happens. Judas, the most well-known traitor of all time, betrays Jesus. But yet Jesus loved him, accepted him, and called him a disciple. What kind of grace and love are we talking about? Because the kind of grace and love that I can give, I feel like is conditional sometimes. And that unconditional love that is spoke about in the Bible is just something that I feel like we use that word too often to fully understand. That no matter if you deny, reject, ignore, God is still going to love you and pursue you and be proud of his creation. Paul then lays out all that we gain with the grace and gift of Jesus, the redemption of our mistakes, the wisdom and peace of our understanding. Um, there's sometimes when we go through trials in our life, um, this peace that comes over someone who I feel like is just connected with the Lord and is in, in that walk is hard to um, understand and talk about. But what does this practically look like? And today, um, me and my wife, we met early, early in our adult life. Um, my wife was, I think, graduated high school about out of like at a year and I was 20. And when we met, our lives were nothing crazy has happened at that point. At 20 years old, I didn't, I didn't like lose my house. I didn't have a house. Um, I just barely had a car that kind of worked. But my life, I didn't go through so much at that point. And when we got together, uh, we started dating, and, and she was going through school, and I was working, and just going through dating life. Um, and as we've been married now for five going on six years, a lot of things in my life has gotten worse. We, we have lost loved ones. Um, there's been drama with friends. There's been drama in family. I guess I think I'm the only one that can relate to that. That's a joke. Just kidding. Uh, basically, life issues have happened. I lost money. Um, I think I had more money like when I first started, when we first got started getting married. Like life happens. Um, houses break, cars crash, and we had to buy a new car. Like practically on a level, my life didn't necessarily get better. But I don't regret being with her through those moments because what I gained through that was a partner, someone that I loved and someone that I cared for someone that helped me, someone that understood who I was and I was learning with her and understood who she was. And we were growing in this partnership. And I never once thought, man, since my grandmother passed away in 2019, that was Cassidy's fault because, you know, she, she was still alive when she was around. No, I'm not going to think that. But I feel like this is where I get at, and I'm coming with a point here, is that my point is this that God shows you in the midst of knowing we would disappoint him. That 
when I choose God, I'm not going to choose him because I want my life to automatically be better. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, the enemy is real. He is a, I feel like if you, for me, I believe in God. I believe Jesus says who he is. And scripture talks about the enemy, talks about the devil. Um, he's real and he doesn't really like you very much. I don't know if that's new news, but that's the actual news. And he's trying to find ways for you not to be connected with God. And things happen in our life. Tough situations take place. Drama in the family, financial situations, job loss, all this thing, all these things happen, but it's not because whether you choose God or you don't choose God. My choosing of God and my saying yes to Jesus goes beyond the actual kind of practical annoyances and difficult situations that we go through in our life. Our life problems are not going to go away when we say yes to Jesus, but what you gain is unmatched. Peace, understanding. My favorite in verse 13, I'm going to go right back here in verse uh, Ephesians 13, uh, 1, 13. It says this, In Him, in Christ, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And when you believe the Holy Spirit is the down payment of, of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. You see, there's something much bigger that is at stake. You see, when I go through something difficult, I know I have the Holy Spirit there with me. I know when I make terrible mistakes that no matter what I do, no matter what I've done, Jesus has already forgiven me and has defeated death on the cross. I think it's hard to understand between that guilt and conviction kind of comparison. You see, if you feel guilt over something, I'm going to tell you this, you shouldn't feel guilty because Jesus has defeated that guilt. Conviction is a little different. Conviction is something that Jesus puts on your heart that maybe you've done something wrong. But that guilt, like you will never fully understand the grace and love of Jesus until you can let go of guilt in your life. If you can eventually let go of guilt in your life, you then can be like, oh, Jesus' love is unconditional because for me, I've done some embarrassing things that I'm not proud of that I would not say on this camera on live stream. But it doesn't matter because Jesus has forgiven me of that situation. Because when life gets bad, you have a Savior who is excited to do it with you. The reason why I choose Jesus, and the reason why I choose God, and the reason why, one, He first loved me, He first created me, He first pursued and chose me, I'm lucky to have awesome parents who continually just call, call me and to check in on me, see how I'm doing, make sure life's okay. And I'll tell you what, that just, you know, excites me. It makes me want to love them and call them and reach out to them. It's a relationship. And I know if life gets bad, I have my parents. When life gets bad, I have my family. When life gets bad, I have my wife. And I know for a fact when life gets hard, I have a Savior to do it with that can, I can lean on, that I can pray, that I can have understanding. I want to close with some questions and then I just want to pray for you guys and we'll conclude our time here tonight. Because some question I want you guys to write down is, are you willing to choose God in spite of our life still going to be hard? Because when I was a kid, I'm like, all right, if I pray to God, I don't go to hell. Cool. Does that mean my life's better? I think so. But it's not the case. Are you willing to choose God in spite of your situation right now? May physically, like in this practical time at that moment, might not immediately get better. I could say it might even get worse. Our, and the second question is this, our life gets called up when we say yes to Jesus. So what happens when we say no? There's a point that we need to live to. When we, we call ourselves Christ followers, when we call ourselves Christians, there's a point that, you know, God is calling us up to like the big leagues, right? And he's like, hey, we got to start acting. You got to start living a life like Jesus. And then for me, it's like, man, what if I just say no? What if you're at a point in your life where you're like, I just don't think I can choose Jesus right now. And for me, I think that's awesome that you're, you're wrestling with that. But I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for everyone on stream, because sometimes when we have to choose something, when we're choosing Jesus, I mean, I want our yes to be yes, and our no to be no, as Jesus' words in Matthew. So let me pray. Um, if you guys would pray with me. Jesus, just thank you so much for this time. God, for those who are just wrestling with choosing you, God, because of a difficult situation, 
Maybe they're here because of that difficult situation and they're looking for a savior. And God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you wipe away guilt and you give understanding, you give peace, you give us an inheritance. But God, I just pray for those people right now who maybe have chose you and realize, well, was this a mistake? My life hasn't gotten easier. God, I pray that they can just um, pray and just be ministered to right now. God, I pray if they're a part of a community, if they're a part of a church, or if they just need someone to pray with, that they could connect with us right now and that we could reach out to them. God, I pray if they are not a part of a local church, that they could find a local place where they have believers who are here to walk through life and to actually begin to love them unconditionally the way that you have loved us unconditionally. Jesus, just thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy and for your love. God, I pray that we can choose you because you chose us first. God, thank you for your love that is so free, that it's so incredible. And thank you for your son, Jesus, to live a life of example and to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus, we love you, and we're so thankful for this time. It's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining in. We will be here same time next week. It won't be me. It'll be somebody else. But it's going to be an incredible time. So thank you all so much for tuning in on our online community. Thank you for our hosts. Thank you for the incredible worship. Thank you for all the people behind the scenes. Uh, you guys have a blessed week. Darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens as a space between where's then I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us, nothing stands between us.